I played an RPG the other day. Mm -hmm. Which one? I was, I was that for more that fanfare wasn't Honkai? Yeah, I was hoping for more fanfare on that one. I was, right. I was, I was hoping for claps and applause is right. <laughs> okay. Oh, let me hear what you've played. Yeah, let us. me hear what you've played. Uh, well, I watched John's video, uh, Super Eye Patch Wolf, on. Right. Uh, it was called like uh, the uh, the cruelest video game, whatever. Oh, yes. oh yes. yeah, I saw that one. Yeah, I watched yeah. like one minute of it and I was like, pause. I want to play this. <laughs> I, I, I want to watch the video because I, I, I want to I want to play this game. Mm, yeah, it's called Fear and Hunger. Mm. And it's this fucking horrible, grotesque game with disgusting things happening in it. Um, and yeah, it was it was definitely one of the cruelest video games I've ever played. Did you beat it? Uh, what makes it so uh, cruel? I haven't had time to watch John's video yet. Sell it to me. Okay, so uh, it's a dungeon crawler mixed uh, RPG uh, <laughs> mixed with resource management and you're dropped into this world in like a medieval setting. It's mm -hmm. extremely, extremely heavily inspired by Berserk. Yeah, um, okay. Because the, the plot is, is that you get to pick one of four classes and your job and each character has a different motivation for why they want to find, <clears throat> uh, he's called Lagarde. But in this, for all intents and purposes, he's, he's Griffith. Yeah, uh, mm. Griffith has gone into this dungeon to seek more power, and it's your job to go and find him. Like one of the characters' job is to like he wants revenge. One of the characters to save him. One of the characters is just because maybe he's like a vessel or something. And your job is to go into this dungeon and f save him uh, before he dies, because there's a time limit, and when he's gonna he's gonna get killed. Um, the thing is. Uh, is that this world that you've entered is not <clears throat> your world. It's not like, it's like a different place in, in this world. Think like Dark Continent, Hunter, Hunter, Hunter. Right, right. Again, the game is very heavily inspired Isikai? by anime. No, I'm not this guy. <laughs> it's very- Silence, like, child. There's so, there's so many anime references in this in this game. Right. Uh, and again, it's just one big omen to like berserk as a plot. <laughs> and so you enter this world and it's just really like unsettling. Like there's no music right away. Right. And it's, you know, there's like really weird, like, you know, in the, the shuffling sound in RPG Maker, mm. it's just kind of weirdly unsettling. Like think of like Ib and Mad Father. Yep. You're kind of like scrolling around these, these world. And then, you know, you immediately get into this game and then you're walking and everything's kind of like this blood everywhere. There's bodies hanging. There's also dicks everywhere. Um, <sighs> Everything has a dick. Right. It's pretty really grotesque. Uh, and you go into this world and then you get attacked by two <coughs> wolves right away. And you'll, you will you try to fight these wolves, mm -hmm. odds are you'll die. Right. Um, thing is though, uh, <laughs> is that enemies can attack with their limbs. Uh, and, and so- <laughs> Wait, enemies can attack so, with their so limbs? So normally in RPG mm. enemies, right? If there yeah. are two wolves, then that's two turns by the enemy, right? Yeah. One, wolf one or wolf two. Mm -hmm. right. In Fear and Hunger, wolf one has four attacks. No, 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 it, it would have, so certain enemies have certain ones. So yeah. the legs are normally for movement and the right. arm, two arms means, uh, for, but for wolves specifically, they bite. But other enemies, if they have two hands, they have two hits. Oh shit, um, yeah. okay. And there's a <clears throat> dismemberment system where you have to dismember the enemy to then be able to land a headshot to kill them. Uh, the, but there's, a, there's that balance between, you can go for a headshot right away, but the, the chance of hitting it are very low. But if yeah. you cut their legs off, they lose balance and it's easy to land a headshot, but if the enemy has arms, they still, they can still hit you. And so you can either get rid of their arms first and then they can tackle you, which is a very weak attack, right. and then go for the legs, then go for the head. And it's like this kind of like balancing act where you kind of got to decide what's the best way to go for. Mm. And these enemies do a lot of damage. And let's say an enemy has uh, like a meat cleaver. Well, uh, you know, because the walls will kill you right away. And so you you, you load the game up again and you, yeah. you manage to get into the castle right away. An ogre will approach you right away and will hunt you down and he catches you right away. And his dick is just out on the floor. <sighs> um, it's gross. Uh, but what you'll learn right away is, is that this ogre, when he hits you with this hacksaw, he just dismembers you and you've permanently lost that arm for the rest of the run. Okay. Uh, and if he hits your leg, you lose the leg. Uh, and if you lose both legs, you have to crawl for the rest of the game. Um, so it's it's horrible. And so let's say you, you're you fighting this ogre, right? And you manage to cut his arm off. He he then, at one point during this fight, and this introduces you to the, this mechanic, he, he walks up to you and it's really like creepy. He goes, a, a prompt will appear, heads or tails. <laughs> right. So then you flip the coin <clears throat> and if you call it correctly, you dodge the attack. If you call, If you call it incorrectly, you just basically die. Um, and in, in the starting one, you kind of get dismembered and then you get dropped in a dungeon filled with blood. 
and you have no legs and you're crawling around and it's fucked. And so you basically have to restart the run because you, you can't do the also, game with no Also, it's permadeath as well. So yeah. if you die, oh. then you have to go back to the beginning of the game. Uh, oh, no, no, there are saves. Uh, but here's the, here's the fucked up thing about the saves <laughs> is that the saves are coin tosses. And if you, if you, <laughs> if, you what? Fail, if you fail the coin toss, uh, a really OP enemy will spawn to greet you and your save doesn't count. And you have to fight the enemy and that enemy can one shot. And if you if your party member dies, they're dead. You can't revive them. And you can collect party members, but they also can get infected and they get dismembered. Uh, and again, it's a resource management. So you're hungry right. and you have uh, like MP and MP is hard to refill. Uh, it's called mind and they go insane if you don't have enough of it. Mm. Hunger, there's not enough resources in the game as well. So you have to manage, if you want a full party, which is great because you're more powerful, but you need more food. Uh, and so that's a that's problematic. Also, oh yeah. Also, there is absolutely no merit to fighting enemies because you don't get any experience. Yeah, you don't. They don't drop <laughs> items, so you don't need to fight enemies. But certain times you'll just be you can't run away. Yeah. Sometimes it's just quicker to trim and <clears throat> kill them. Um, and all of the items in the world are randomly placed, so it's just like a pool. So in some runs you could just not get anything OP. In other runs you might get super OP items right away. Um, or in my, my <laughs> run, uh, the item to refill your mana uh, is alcohol and opium. <laughs> it's, it's called it's called mind. Right. So it's your sanity. Right. So the only way to, to refill your sanity <laughs> is to drink alcohol or smoke opium. <laughs> get but, high or I, get drunk. And I kept getting opium, but I needed a pipe to smoke it. I didn't get it right until the end. So I I, I, I was like struggling the entire game. Just carrying around bags of opium. I, I it's so like, what do I do with this? So like you get like kids and stuff and you have to make the kids smoke the crack or the opium to like help them. This this, sound, this sounds like a fever dream here. Right it's now. like JRPG on crack. And then like, you know, it's like, it's really Really like, you know, in the start, it's more like they're like more humanoids and the deeper you go into this dungeon and find more about the world, yeah. uh, they all start to get a little more like really surreal and like creepy and very kind of like, uh, what's the- Some of like, the enemies just are absolute fucking nightmare. Yeah, fuel. like more nightmare fuel. Like genuinely right. Bosses are very difficult and it's very unforgiving. And there's like 15 endings, uh, all you can do a bunch of different things. I got two endings, both were kind of meh. It's really hard to get the true ending. Uh, yeah, maybe it's cause I'm not a gamer, mm. but this doesn't sound fun. Hold on, okay, so, uh, rewind to about 15 minutes ago when you were like, I'm, I'm a gamer. A gamer. <laughs> yeah, okay. Okay, so, so like, it's it's actually a, an amazing game. Mm. Um, okay. And the story is really fascinating because it's about like, uh, so you're trying to save this guy, but it's about like how uh, there's like, one of the characters is like, his village was attacked by like the main, characters like country and army and there's different gods involved and there's a whole lot of stuff going on and you pick up bu books throughout by the way the only way to get lore a lot of the time is from a coin flip so sometimes you go to a bookshelf and to get more lore you have to win the coin flip and if you don't you just don't get the lore um <laughs> but again like the entire game and, and like a lot of reviews say this like the difficulty does not come from uh like any kind of gameplay it's all like no, it's the, the difficulty comes from just knowing what to do because like as well in the game, right? You st you, you have a coin flip, right? Yeah. And you're like, great, this is awesome. I 50, 50 chance for everything. That's, that is not awesome. That's that, yeah, is, that, that is the opposite of but, awesome. But what, you do, what the game doesn't tell you at any point, uh, unless you click on the item, which you would never do, is that you can pick up stuff called lucky coins and they're very rare, but when you do get them, you hold shift down. The game doesn't tell you any of this. You hold shift and then you flip two coins. And then now only one of them needs to land on so it. So, now, so you've made it from 50% to 75% chance. So now suddenly saving becomes at least a little bit safer. 75%, uh, I don't know. Oh, oh, You're a capture results, gamer, 10% uh, is good uh, for you. I don't know what um, So yeah, like, and then like, you know, you're also like walking around and there's like prompts at the bottom of the screen sometimes that just tell you information like, oh, your party member's hungry. Is yeah. it's going low. And then sometimes, there's like a prompt and you have no idea what this, this prompt means. And it, initially it goes, a terrifying presence has entered the room. Uh, and you're like, what, what does that mean? <laughs> and throughout the game, there's just this like, think of like pyramid head, yeah. and like Silent Hill, mm. just following you. And he's OP as fuck. And he's just hunting you down. So there's also this added pressure of that already on along with resource management and just trying to survive. It just, after watching John's video, I was like, I 
think I would love this game, but it just sounds way too fucking stressful for me right now. It's stressful, but I think it's a good kind of stress where you feel very rewarded the moment you find stuff out. Right. Like I, in this world as well, like there's this item that I wasted because I didn't know what it was because it's not explained to you. Nothing yeah. is explained to you in this game. Yeah. If I didn't have Twitch chat, I think I just would not have played this game because mm. it's just like, I don't, understand how you would learn anything without looking up a guide. Yeah. You, you can't play this game without a guide, I'm pretty sure. I, don't, mm. I just don't know how you well, would. Well, not without like <coughs> a ton of trial and error. Yeah, you'd yeah. have to do like, but even like for this example, right? How would you learn this? Unless you, I, maybe it's hidden in one of the books that you have to coin flip for. <laughs> you got a thing called an empty scroll and I opened it up and I couldn't close it. I didn't know what it was. And you just type stuff in. And I was like, oh, well, I can't do anything. And you, you just put three verses in. I was like, what the fuck? So I wasted it. And then right at the end, I picked up another one and someone in my chat told me, oh, by the way, you can just ask God for anything. I was like, what? I was like, yeah, yeah, you just ask for anything. Yeah. I'm like, are you kidding me? And I'm like, how? Wait, what's God? So in the game, the, the theme of God plays a very like uh, becoming God or uh, the existing gods play a very, very heavy role in this. And you start right. to learn more about the gods. Okay. And so you, you can just ask the God for something, but you have to type in, like a very specific set of words initially before you can ask for what you want. And I'm just thinking, who the fuck would find this out? But then, you know, I I, I did it and I, I someone in chat told me, ask for this thing and I asked for it. And by the way, to, there's, there's healing items in the game and your characters have 100 HP and you only get healing items every now and then. And they yeah. only heal for like 10. <clears throat> so you, you can barely ever heal your party to full. Yeah. Gate found me this thing where you can just heal your whole party for 30 health or 40 health with a spell that costs MP and you can regenerate MP pretty easily. So I was like, what the fuck? This makes the game so much easier. <laughs> and if I didn't get this stupid fucking spell, I wouldn't have known that. Yeah. So it's like you, you, it's very punishing, but also it's really cool kind of uh, trial and error experimenting. I'd say like the best way to play the game is to just grind a little bit, just, just die a bunch, figure stuff out. It's mm. very satisfying. And then when you get kind of later on, just fucking look at a guide. because it's, <laughs> it's so uh, fun. I, I don't know. That, uh, from the way you describe the game, that's like a level beyond, okay, this is a hard game. And if you like- It's not hard. It's easy, but you just need to know what to do. <laughs> that's the thing, Connor. Like, how can brain, you- Brain surgery isn't hard. Yeah. It's easy it's if like, you know what to do. Yeah, it's, like, yeah. it's, like, it's like if I gave you a Rubik's cube, right? And yeah. you were able to put it in online and then have the algorithm walk you through every movement. Yeah. Like I wouldn't describe that as hard, right? Like mm. following that algorithm. Yeah. Whereas try, giving someone a Rubik's cube for the first time and being like, solve it. That's hard, right? Like, yeah. So it, it's the same challenge, but when you're presented with more information, the challenge becomes exponentially easier. So it's not a it's not a difficulty that derives from any skill or anything like that. It's no, not. It just, it's just, it, it just sounds like you have to be a madman to play through the game enough to get the information you need. Oh yeah, and like, the amount of trial and error you go through, right? Oh fuck yeah! Was, I mean, like I, think I, I went through most of the game without looking at anything, mm. and I got, I, I was able to get decently through the game, uh, and it was pretty much just when I wanted to start actually getting the endings where I had to actually look what to do because right. the endings are very odd to get. Like I just went through do, killing everything that I could until I w got to an ending and it was just a weird ending. I, <laughs> I, I yeah, it was very strange. From, from, from what it sounds like, this sounds like a streamer game, you know? I, I, no, I, you can't stream it there. Like that's the thing is that like, you could only stream it recently because someone had made an unsaid, like a censored mod. Right. Cause there's like, there's like, there's gore, there's sexual assault in it, uh, really fucked up things. Right. Um, yeah, John's video is censored to shit. Yeah, oh, it's, okay. hard, it's hard to recommend, but it's like, it captures that, that really uncomfortable horror vibe that I haven't had from a game in a very long time that mm. I really enjoyed. And so I, that's why I'd recommend everyone play it. Cause it's not everyone, sorry. Fuck, no, do not play it. <laughs> <If> <laughs> everyone you, kids, play it. Kids, uh, if you, I, found, I found the new game you for like you. Really fucked up games that challenge you and really make you feel anxiety and scared, then yeah, it's great. I fully recommend Apparently it. Apparently there's a second one as well, which is even harder yeah, than the first harder. one yeah. I've heard. Well, uh, yeah, I mean, from what I, I haven't played it obviously, but uh, from what I understand from the plot, it's um, uh, maybe you'd like it. It's very anime-esque. It very takes a lot from uh, Majora's Mask because yeah. there's, oh, okay. there's a moon, right? it's evil, and there's three days. And the premise of the second game is that it's a more open world and you have to, you have to be the, there's like, 20 or 10 other people who come on this train journey that crashes. Mm. And then you have to kill everyone else and be the last person alive. Right. Damn. But you don't have to kill people and stuff. And But it's, it sounds interesting. And it's set during 
I think World War Two. Mm. Yeah, I probably that it probably wouldn't be a game for me just because I have I don't I, I have patience, but mm. that just sounds like a bad time. <laughs> that, I, I liked sad. it because like I loved Berserk a lot, and it and was you like, love Jump King as well. You well, love, it's like. <laughs> You it, it was sick. Shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It yeah. kind of captured that kind of really uncomfortableness that Berserk gave me. I mean, because it's basically mm. like a Berserk. Yeah. Like there's, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. there's direct comparisons to like, I and mean, you can, you can, there's a, you can fucking get Guts's armor in the game. <laughs> like you can go, you. there's a place where you can get this armor that penetrates your body. Yeah. Like spikes and stuff. Um, but like, yeah, that's, it's cool. Cause it's kind of like, what if somebody who was very heavily inspired by Berserk kind of did a very, fucked up. I mean, Berserk's pretty fucked up. Yeah. yeah. Like a, a, a different take on it for a video game where you can really delve into it and kind of have branching paths. It was really mm. interesting. I, I really enjoyed it. Mm. That was cool.